Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason with Wolf Overland and you probably haven't already heard from my previous videos or uh, my Instagram or my Patreon. We are going to Moab again. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different than last time. So this is pretty much, um, we're gonna be solo for the start of this trip. And I was originally just gonna do Colorado. I can't get the White Rim Trail out of my head. Um, when we went, it was like the coolest place um, I've ever been. Um, and the White Rim Trail was, I mean, we did only like four hours into it. If you remember from last year, my video, we did about four hours into it. The other people in the group, they wanted to go do other stuff in Moab. So, and we didn't even get to the good part. You know, the first four hours is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, until you get to like Murphy Hog back and the other stuff off uh, the other end, that's where it's supposed to get fun, right? I've never done the complete White Rim Trail. We just did the four hours onto that. And I want to do more, man. You know, I can't get it out of my head. It's been a year and so cool out there. And a little bit nervous to do it solo. Um, but the other campsites, so I picked, I already got the permits and the other campsites up there, um, I think we're staying at Murphy Hogback B but the other two campsites up there are, are booked as well. So there will be other people up there. So I'm not like gonna be out there alone, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> in, this, uh, in this hobby, you meet a lot of people out there that are doing the same thing and it's really easy to make friends. Uh, my last trail adventure, the Alabama Rubicon, we met a friend out there or we met someone out there, we became good friends. And uh, when we did Land Between the Lakes, we met Matt out there and you know, we, Became good friends and we're gonna go for two weeks and so we're gonna kind of beeline it out to Moab and the White Room Trail we're gonna run that and then if the time allots we're gonna do Rim Rocker from Moab to Montrose and then go into Telluride do the Alpine Loop with my dad and all that and then from there we're gonna go take we'll probably take uh, 70 back um, so go, yeah, so we'll take 70 back to the flat tops in Colorado um, and kind of play. So the later half after Telluride, it's still kind of up in the air. I really haven't planned that down to the detail. Um, getting out there, I did book um, campsites getting out there um, because we are taking the southern route. Um, it's about 50 miles more. But we are not climbing the Appalachian Mountains. We're not climbing the Rocky Mountains going out there. We are taking the southern route through Atlanta, through uh, Oklahoma, through the top of Texas, and then up through New Mexico. I've, um, I haven't been to uh, Mississippi or um, New Mexico yet. So I have been you know, my dad used to live in Dallas, so I used to drive to Dallas from uh, Chicago. And I've never driven that corridor before. So it seems like it's pretty flat. So the Eco Diesel should continually get better mileage going that way, though it'll probably be a little bit more boring because driving through the mountains is fun. Driving through the Rocky Mountains is really fun, at least last time it was. And um, so what are your thoughts on driving the Southern route? Um, going coming up through New Mexico into Moab is that worse better uh, let me know uh, down below but that's the route that I'm planning to take uh, this time at least going out there as of right now we are about two weeks away um, from going and I have been working like crazy on the Jeep to get her going tomorrow I'm doing all the maintenance the oil change we're doing coolant uh, rear diff and uh, filters of course, you know, the famous diesel fuel filter. I have videos and all that stuff. But as you guys see behind me, this is what I've been working on for the last three weeks. The Red Arc, Red Vision, and Manager 30. Let's go over that real quick. So here's 13 gallon water tank. Goes all the way across the side, 50 liters. I'm not using this as drinking water. Um, so what I do is I have it basically ran, um, ran through here and then I have a little ball, ball valve and I have the Dometic, 
Um, this is the Dometic Spigot. It's USB rechargeable. It has an LED light. And what I'm what I do is put it out right here, and then I'm just gonna touch this. Open the bell valve. There you go. And I got water. Conserves water. It's good for washing your hands. Uh, conserves water. And I'm going to use it pretty much for cooking. So anything I have to heat up and boil, I'll, I'll, I'll do it that way. That way I know it's boiled and it's good to go. And then just for washing hands and shower. So... Always make sure, lock it, and then put it back in here. Um, so I'm gonna trash. And then I have a little pump thing I could drop down in that thing, and that's USB too, and it's basically a shower head. So I do have a shower room right here and it will reach through so I have something to take a shower with on the road for water and shower uh, you can't beat that so it's an Ironman 4x4 13 gallon and I have a stretch it that basically holds it from side to side and it's kind of pinned in between the ammo box slide and uh, both of these are alloy cab accessories um, you could pin it over here but I like having it here as a divider because um, sometimes when you're really you know uh, going off-road these boxes uh, will come off and uh, this will kind of keep them from flying everywhere and doing damage but it does come with it's, I don't know how well you can see that there is a nozzle down there so it does have a nozzle and um, I run. I ran some uh, some hose all the way to the back here with the Dometic sink. My favorite fan has a quick message for you guys. Please watch me for why. Onto the Red Vision system. This is the Red Arc system. So it's a Manager 30 with the Red Vision. Now you can get just. The, um, the manager 30 or you can just get the red vision or you can get you don't have to get the manager 30 they have different ones out now um, that don't do it that can still charge a house battery this is the way to go so um, starting off what is this and why do you need it I run a fridge and we run a bunch of lights and we run camera batteries drone batteries an inverter you know, nowadays everything is power heavy, right? So um, the best thing to do is instead of running all this on the battery of your vehicle, you run it off a house battery, kind of like an RV, something like that. So in a nutshell, there are a couple of different types of batteries on the market, right? So you have your regular lead acid battery, which comes in 99% of all cars nowadays under the hood. And that's meant to start a car. It's meant for a high, 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 high uh, power draw at first to turn that starter over and start the car up. And then from there, it heavily depends on the alternator to keep, you know, the 12 volts and the amperage to keep that battery topped off. But from there, you can step up. And, you know, what a lot of people did is they got a AGM battery. AGM batteries can run longer. They can run a fridge longer than a... Um, than a regular lead acid battery because they don't they're not good at giving that strong draw off the line for to start up a bat a car they're not really good at that you'll get a bigger cold cranking amps off of a lead acid battery than the agm battery but an agm battery will hold the charge way longer um, the third option is to get the new lithium batteries lithium batteries are very expensive Lithium batteries are also extremely lightweight. I mean, they're apples to oranges on the weight, guys. I mean, whereas in, it will take you, you know, 
a couple of heavy breaths in both hands to pick up a lead acid battery. Picking up a lithium battery, you can just, you know, grab it like this and just pull up like nothing. I mean, the weight difference is crazy. And the power is crazy around it too. A um, 100 amp hour lithium battery um, is extremely lightweight and it will run this fridge. Um, I believe last time it was set in eight days. It, uh, with the fridge running, it could run my fridge for about eight days before it needs um, to charge up. So I do. So on mine, I do run a 100 amp hour lithium battery. And let me show you where it's at. So right under my ARB compressor here, right there is a 100 watt hour lithium battery. And that is completely powered by the Manager 30. Manager 30 takes that lithium amp, amp battery and it takes the solar panels up top um, and it keeps it charged. Now, to set this up, we, we run a positive cable from the main battery to this unit. And we also run another wire from the ignition uh, that's you know a switched ignition wire we also run that to this as well and that's basically the only two wires that you run from up here i did run a ground wire from the negative battery um to here because i want like zero voltage drop i want um no resistance from front to back because i don't know how well it switches from the cab and whatnot the power but i just want 100% good ground, especially when you're coming with battery. So I did run a, uh, another ground strap directly from the battery um, to help out with um, resistance on the ground circuit. So three wires from the front to the back is pretty much what I did. And then the main, the house battery plugs up into here as well. And then all your accessories plug up into here as well so this is a dc dc converter so this grabs power from the front battery via the alternator right and this takes that dc voltage increases it and puts it into the house battery very efficiently it's not just running like a wire from here to the house battery this amplifies it and will charge the house battery way faster than a what I had in the Tundra before which was basically an isolator. The isolator did not charge this as efficient as a DC-DC converter. So this is a game changer when it comes to fridges and you know in-house power systems. And then this is the next level up here. This is the Red Vision. I added this sticker. It's a it came from Etsy or something like that, but I thought it was a cool custom touch. But this is basically a fuse box for everything and a, um, a switch panel, basically like a very fancy switch pro, right? So um, you can see all the fuses I have in here and it comes with labels. So all these labels um, I put on there and the amount of fuses and this runs everything from the power up there in the tent to all the house lights, to my compressor, to charging the Jackery, inverter, um, flashlights, walkie talkies. I mean, I could, sky's the limit with this thing, right? And then the next level up from this is the actual um, Red Vision display. So this Red Vision technically comes with, it's basically like an LCD readout. And this is the next level because this has um, Bluetooth to your phone. So this does way more um, stuff. And um, so I just press a button, it turns it on. Let me see if I can get you a better view of the screen here. So basically it's telling me right now that um, I have 11 days right now to run the fridge as is. Um, basically how my fridge is running right now, I can hear it. So it's basically saying I have 10 days on this house battery and shows the power transfer flow. And then these are all your programmable buttons for different things. Um, like this one right here, uh, turns on my red lights. I have red lights here and 
I was gonna put more, but just red lights because it keeps the bugs away. So you can leave these on at night um, at camp and just kind of have an ambiance scene. I mean, same with these lights right here. Um, so that turns that on. That on. This turns on my ARB air compressor. I have a dual air compressor mounted to the bottom of the cabinet. Um, that turns that on and off. This turns on my walkie-talkies right here. Um, this right here turns on the canopy lights on the inside. So those white lights there, I got three of them. These are actually the old, so see one, two, three, and that lights up the whole inside here so I can see what I'm doing. And that actually, those three lights were the, actually the old three lights that were on here before I upgraded to these. These do white lights and they do red lights, so they got both red and white on there. And I like that better for the bugs. This turns on, this one right here turns on the little inverter I have up in the tent that's hardwired up there to run my fans, the tent lights, charging. I could run a, um, I could run a, I could run a heater blanket up there. I can, um, it's bit, yeah, so it's, it's a basically a very small version of this. Um, I could run USBs and, you know, my phones and everything up there. And you don't want that hot at all times if something happens. So this will turn that on and off. This turns on that little inverter here. Yes, Red Arc makes a really nice um, 1000 watt or even 2000 watt inverter that actually syncs to this system. Um, but that's, that's overkill power. 500 watts, I believe, is more than the... Um, is more than the uh, truck outlet in the back. I believe the one in the back is 300 watt. And the only one I have plugged into my truck um, inverter in the back is my DeWalt uh, battery for the chainsaw and the uh, electronic impact gun that I use to take off lug nuts. So I keep that just on there and I can turn that on and off as needed from the dash of the Jeep um, to charge that up. Um, Typically, I only do that when I uh, when I'm driving and swapping out the batteries. So you can scroll down to the next menu by pressing this down button right here. Click that. So these are if it's green, it's on obviously. So this right here is the canopy lights. So these lights right here, they're always on because you can turn them on and off per door per se. Um, so that's always on. And then the fridge right there, that's always on and running. And then this one right here is, yeah, so this one turns on the Jackery uh, charger to charge up the Jackery 300 um, that I have on here. And this one turns on my flashlight, I believe, yes. I want to turn on my flashlight over here, which I don't have plugged in. lights on now right yep so that turns on the flashlight and with that i have all the loads so you can have one two three four five five of the low amperage loads that are 10 amp and then you could have another five of the 30 amp loads and i have all the loads taken up so um they're all you program this with an app um, Red Arc has a programming app that programs all this um, as you want. You can pick the icons, you can pick the labels. Um, it's all Bluetooth. It's really, really overkill on everything. I, once you've seen how this works, like you have to have it and it's expensive, but um, it, it's totally worth it. Um, Cause you can also go over and look at um, all your power inputs and outputs. So I can go on here and see the state of charge because I do have a 160 watt solar panel up on top of the tent. So that basically keeps this thing at 100% every day. I mean, there's no reason this should fall under, you know, 90% overnight. There's, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So 
we had a lot of rain today, so and a lot of rain yesterday. But you can go through and see how much how much watt hours per day this thing's pulling in. So definitely, you know, worth it. Uh, you have a time up here. And then you have these two temperature readings. 77 degrees is the temperature right now inside the canopy. And that's good to know. You can monitor that for as far as the AGM. I mean, as far as the lithium battery is concerned, it's very temperature sensitive to low temperatures as well as high temperatures. So you can keep your, you can monitor your battery temperature. 42 degrees is what my fridge is at right now. Um, you can actually, I ran a probe into the um, into the fridge, so I have um, an actual readout of my fridge. So I can set an alarm if the fridge accidentally turns off, or you know, I can actually uh, have an alarm set for that. <clears throat> so this is basically the Red Vision in a nutshell. Ah, so but this is basically the Red Vision in a nutshell, and um, I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, it's just basically those three menu settings right there, Bluetooth settings. Um, but you can set up everything. Um, the app lets you set up what displays you want. It also has inputs for a water tank. So I do have the sensors. I could install the sensors on this. You drill them and it has pl plastic grommets and you put the sensors as, um, as the chart shows. You put the sensors in here and that gives you a tank readout. So like a gas tank, it will show you how much, um, how much uh, water is left in your tanks. And since I don't really use this all the time, it's not, it's not worth it to me because I can just put my finger inside and see if I'm full or not. Um, if th this tank was underneath, you know, or mounted, you know, in a trailer or something like that, that would make a hundred percent way more sense um that would be worth it and um again the only reason why you know um i have the tank in here is just for you know like summer trips like this moab trip and again red arc makes a really nice inverter um i do have this 500 watt inverter because this is all i need it for for charging you know random flashlights and stuff um and uh, my diesel heater i do it does have a cigarette plug down here so i can plug my diesel heater up into this and run my diesel heater all night off of this and it will be fine um, or i can run the diesel heater off the jackery um, that should do it all night but i feel better using the house battery um so that's one thing i have that for i don't really have a need for a huge inverter um there there's another inverter plug in the uh, um, in the center console on, on the Jeep. I opted it with it when I built this Gladiator. And there's an inverter, there's a plug back here. And I do have something plugged in right there, but sometimes my wife uses the plug in there for her laptop. Um, or, you know, I do charge drone batteries and stuff like that, so I can plug. I normally use the Jackery for that, or I have the option of plugging this. and taking the jackery you know next to the fire or you know friend needs it or something like that um, kids need to charge our ipads or something that works so i've been spending a lot of time on that that's basically the red vision in a nutshell and this is all my toiletry stuff toothbrushes deodorant all that stuff easy access i'm keeping the cook kit right here that's all the spatulas um so i do have containers in here for spices cleaning, cutting board, spatulas, um, everything for knives, everything for cooking, which Satish isn't going on this trip. So I'll have to figure this all out on my own. And hopefully I got it down because I didn't really do a trial run. I have an Alucab table that pulls down and I can set up over here. It's all super lightweight aluminum, but the fridge is on a slide. So pull this, it unlocks, slides out. And then you're gonna slightly lift up and it comes down on a 45 degree angle. So it allows you to access it if you're short. Um, the fridge doesn't open up all the way like this, but you can uh, unclip, 
both sides and just take the whole door off if needed to load up the fridge. Um, I started, I started packing already. I got some after eight mints. We got a gallon of water under here and we're gonna load this up with food uh, once, you know, we start getting ready for the trip. I got some silverware in here, like actual sporks and knives and stuff like that. Plastic silverware, because every now and then you just need a quick plastic silverware. Uh, a lighter, um, s'more sticks, that kind of stuff in here. Um, I can do more in here, I haven't decided that yet. Um, so if you guys can see, I do have the temperature probe right there. So I do have the temperature probe and I actually tied it into so I got it all on this loom right here and I have it zip tied up to there so it holds itself up right there. So when the fridge slides back and forth, it doesn't get cut up on the track. I had to replace this the fridge power cable once already because it got caught in the track and kind of ate itself. So I lost my fridge power one day and I traced it down to a cut in the, um, in the wire. So. I insulated it and I made sure it was held up out of the way just enough so I can close it back and forth and not have any issues. And then right there is my ARB dual compressor and I do have a tank and I access it all through over there. But um, it's all tucked away down in there, out of the way, no dust. So that's the fridge. And then I have two front runner seats, chairs. So then I have two front runner chairs and inside each bag is a chair and a little camp table that folds apart too. The camp table I got from Walmart, I believe, and then the chairs and um, bags are all front runners. And they're really nice because it includes the, uh, the chairs and then, or includes the tables in there. And then I'll, I'll pull that out when I get to camp. And then back there, I have a 20 pound propane tank and I'll pull the propane tank here, turn it on, un, you know, unscrew it, turn it on. And I got the, uh, the wire on there. So, or the, I'll turn the propane tank on and the um, propane line is already wound up right there, you know, in the basket, it won't roll around. And I use that for, the propane pit and that hopefully should be here by the end of the week before my trip because I ordered a new propane fire pit that because I have the big one right there that I used last year but it's so big and cumbersome to carry back here when I'm limited in my room so I ordered a small ammo can one from um, was it lava box I'll show that one when we get there but it's really cool because I can cook steak on it too so I'm excited about that um this is the devos light ranger i have two of them but we're just going to use one this trip and then back here on this side i have four fire logs and my camp axe i have a camp axe i have a camp axe down there for the fire log starters that i use and my portable fire pit that Ozark Overland recommended. And then under there, I have some spare stuff. I have some spare toilet paper. I have some cans of oxygen for when we get to the higher elevation of Colorado. And then I have some paper towels so in the baggies back there as spares for when this one runs out. Um, normally I won't have all that stuff, it's just we're going to be gone for two weeks and I want to make sure, you know, I have enough stuff without stopping all the time. So this drawer system, check this out. This is made by SHW Off-Road, a company up in, I believe it's Kentucky. And um, Rob from Revere Overland, I saw it in his Tundra and I absolutely love it. And um, the wait time on this, Let's see, I ordered it in February and I did not get it till about two weeks ago and it is July. So definitely, you know, they're working on their lead times a lot, but all this is, you know, handmade here in America and um, 
lightweight composite parts and it takes full advantage of all the room unlike the deck system you know that has a lot of wasted space this does not have any wasted space this is very functional and it it does come with like the wings that go over it but it doesn't work for my setup because of the ammo slide alu cab accessory in the back the wings will hit it Plus I like it open like this anyway, cause it works with my camper top like this. I like them open cause I can put stuff in them. And you know, on this side, I obviously have the battery and all that stuff. So I need the open space. But these pull them out, twist. They are lockable. I do have keys for them. This side I have all my kitchen stuff, which is new to me. Cause normally Satish is my resident chef. Um, Vegetables, soup, um, I'm kind of leaving this open as food. And then I have my Jet Boil Genesis with the remote burner. Um, my Arctic can koozie, um, camp soap, all the bug stuff, sunscreen, bug, you know, all the bug deterrent stuff I have. The Jet Boil coffee maker for the remote reservoir. Um, I have a fire starter. I have two extra tanks back there of the small green Coleman tanks that are full, just in case I accidentally run the campfire too long. On the big tank, I have backup so I can still cook coffee in the morning. Um, plates, silverware, wash bin, uh, bowls. I'm not doing any paper plates this time. Um, since I have all the water this trip, it's gonna be so easy just to wash off the plates when we're done with them. So I have soap, a bucket, and then I got four bowls, four, four plates, um, silverware, and then um, I have uh, pots and pans. All my seasonings are in here. Oil seasonings, can opener, wine opener, um, coffee, more seasonings, salt, pepper, um, strainer, we do ramen or something, a hot glove. And then cook kit has the rest of the you know utensils I'm gonna need. This is gonna be a kind of a trial thing because I'm not you know really good at camp cooking, and I also I always depended on someone else for this. So this drawer would normally be you know something else. Um, everyone knows I'm a mechanic by trade, so. I have a lot of tools and, you know, like mechanic stuff because I normally consider myself, you know, the person who um, fixes everything and repairs um, all the rigs as we go along because that's, you know, my skill set. So this drawer right here is half of my tools slash recovery stuff. This is more on the recovery side. So I have my Norco jump starter, just in case I, you know, we got a battery that's dead. Uh, my electric impact gun, lug nut um, adapter for the gun, um, soft shackles, snatch blocks, brake fluid, if you have a pop a brake line, um, wench extension line, ratchet straps, rope, uh, that came in, you know, the rope right here in this yellow bag, that came in handy when hiking down to a waterfall one time. Um, if you have a diesel like me, you swear by this stuff. So I got three full ones for this trip. Hopefully it's enough. Uh, we'll do some math on that. Machete, for, again, it just goes with the rope for hiking and stuff like that, getting stuff out of the way. The AV wheel chalk slash jack thing. So since the vehicle is raised, the factory jack can go on top of this and you can still lift the car. This is a bottle jack. This is what I use anyway. So this can actually lift the axle up, not worry about the suspension. My heavy ass tool roll with all my tools. Uh, well, actually a, lo a lot of my hand tools. So sockets, uh, repair stuff, wire repairs. Um, I got a cutoff tool, and I do have a, impact, or a torque wrench down there to tighten lug nuts. Um, another ratchet strap. Suspension pops apart or something like that. We can torque it back down. 
and that is just half of my tools under the back seat I have under the back seat of my Jeep I have um, James said he wanted a pillow back here for um, when we were driving he wanted a pillow if he wanted to lay down or something and I did get him a Bluetooth wireless headphones so he can listen to his iPad wirelessly um, I got paper towel holder up there on uh, this uh, let's see who makes this I always forget MPS they're up here in North Carolina but MPS makes a it's like an attic for um, gladiators and um, Jeeps um, it just fits perfectly up there and um, I have an extra blanket from down here. I have my rain gear. I have my cold hats for me and James. And I have a sweatshirt up here um, in case it gets cold one night. Uh, Blue Ridge Overland gear, trash can, um, some throw up bags, and then another headphone set. I don't know why I have that there some headlight flashlights right there i have medicine as far as toms and anti-diarrhea um some band-aids this deaf fluid right here i'm keeping in here as emergency backup and then i have a container full of food um and then the bottom one is where i'm gonna put all my clothes and then the other one on the other side is where James is gonna put his clothes. So basically the two bottom front runner wolf packs are gonna be clothes for me and him. And then that one's food. And then on this side. Chainsaw, use this all the time, easy access. We have our diesel fuel treatment, which is easy access over here while I'm gassing up funnel for that we have a tree saver strap we have chainsaw wedges because i'm sick of getting stuck on everything and then we have our dead man off road um there's a couple of shackles in there and then the dead man off road kinetic rope so quick unhook here take the chainsaw throw it over there pull out that container and i can do recovery and i don't have to you know what i mean I have my Angry Beaver shovel up here and a mat that I can put down for showers. Yeah, my clothes are right there. And then if you close this, I have four gallons, two gallons each of extra diesel fuel. So even off road, if I'm at least getting 15 miles per gallon, 30, 60, that's 60 miles, 60 miles right here, extra range. Let's see, I can probably open this side. Yeah. So I do have a cold pack down there. And then again, shit, I do have a chainsaw blade. I did order another chainsaw blade. Um, I got WD-40. I forgot about all these tools down here. 42 millimeter. Like, what's that for? A Jeep? Right. A Toyota? Yeah. I believe that's a Toyota axle lug nut. Same with 39. This is something for Toyota. You know, extra... Extra wheel studs. Uh, suspension bolts. You know, just stuff. Stuff, stuff, stuff I might need. All built around Toyota and Jeep parts because for some reason I'm always fixing Toyota parts um, again that continues over there and I would like to have this for gun storage but being a mechanic being a mechanic for life you know I do have lights underneath that work on the door circuit snorkel um, what is this? Metal cloak, metal cloak steps. This is the command. Um, that's new, JT, uh, Jeep truck, all the specs, except the fuel. The fuel specs are wrong because the diesels have a different fuel spec. Um, 
I got bear spray. I got to put Velcro on it and mount it back there by the fridge. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I do have walk, nothing's changed up in here. Everything's pretty much the same, except that sticker from my other video. Um, everything's pretty much the same. Oh, let's unlock that. Uh, snorkel, cyclone pre-filter, worth its weight in gold. Um, we got blistine 8100 shocks. We're sitting on a three inch AV HD uh, lift, 37 inch tires, factory bumper with the wings removed, factory metal bumper with the wings removed. GPM is on lights for now until I get the AV front bumper down the road. Smitty built 12K wrench, factory 55 hardware. Hey baby. My wife's uh, GX470, V8 all wheel drive. Four low center diff lock. I got sleeve frame sliders on it and we got 33s on it. And it's a beast off road, but being an 08 um, and the salsa red, she will never get rid of this vehicle. She loves it. I tried, you know, I work for Honda obviously, and I tried putting her in a new pilot, new passport, trail sport, Odyssey, everything. She loves this car more than any new car right now, unless it's another Lexus. She'll probably get rid of it for another Lexus SUV. She just loves, 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 loves this car. Um, and I love it too, because it is very capable. <laughs> if anything ever happens, I get stuck, she can come pull me out, no problem. Uh, except when a uh, mouse eats the uh, knock sensor harness under the, well, I got another video on that. I had to rip apart the whole intake and replace some wiring under the intake plenum. A mouse ate the uh, knock sensor fire harness, left her stranded. So won't happen again because we put mouse wrap wire on it. AEB rims, 37 inch KM3, BF Goodridge mud trains. Um, I forgot who makes this. I bought it off uh, Northridge 4x4. But it's a nice step and it's got the kick out as a slider. So um, I really like that. It's a step up from the Rubicon rails. This uh, NBX trail gear, Trasheroo. Obviously, when the tailgate goes down, it flips open. And um, I have all the poop bags in here and some wipes, um, extra trash bags. And it's basically an outside garbage can, and then you can flip it on the inside at night so animals don't attack it, <laughs> I guess. Um, what else? Oh, recently, uh, what else did I do? So, the tent. As you can see, the tent, that light's in the way. The tent, I moved it forward, right? Um, I got a new WeBoost antenna. They warranty this thing out so easily for me. Um, the wire was kind of chewed up. But I moved the tent forward a little bit to help with weight distribution to put the shower awning back here so I have a room. So I have room to change, shower, set up the portable toilet to go to the bathroom, to have some privacy. So it's basically a little privacy tent, you know, that you can quickly deploy, take a dump, you know, bathroom stuff right there. Uh, or take a shower or change as always i forget to do an outro scene thanks for watching please like and subscribe we have a bunch of new video coming that i'm probably filming right now out in colorado and moab please subscribe hit the notification bell to get the new episodes to see this jeep out in colorado and moab tearing tearing it up and uh we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching Please like and subscribe for daily videos. Have a great day.